Hey guys, Jason Squiller here, and I'm standing in front of our Week to Wicked C10. Boy, it's a nice truck, but that's really not what today's about. What today's about is talking about our fine American-made suspension components we make right here in-house from designing, engineering, and putting them in production. Let's get started. All right, so let's go see how the fixtures are uh, fabricated. This will be the first step before they hit the welders. I'm out here with Gary, who's the master at making the fixtures. Where do we start? Well, first we're gonna start, the engineering department's gonna scan the part. Uh, in SolidWorks, they're gonna produce the model and all the files of the part we're looking to reproduce. Yeah. Um, this would be a 3D printed part of a lower Tri-5 control arm. Um, and this is basically the part that we're gonna end up fixturing and welding on these robots. And this is all done in-house also? Correct. Awesome. Correct. So once you get this part, what's your next step? My next step is, uh, they break it down into individual components. We print 3D printed check gauges, so we have the consistency of each tube when we're notching them or cutting yeah. them to make the part fit together properly for those robots to weld. We've seen the welders, we've seen them in action, and you know, they're not small. They are very uh, precise, but you've got to build a fixture around the robot. Correct, yeah. I mean, the key, one of the key components to robotic welding is, is consistent parts consistent fixtures that hold those parts the same way every time. All right, well, I appreciate your time, so I'm gonna let you get going. I'm gonna move on to the next station. All right, so once the fixture is all made up and ready to go, we're over here at one of the robotic welders, and Jared here is the man of this machine, and well, you got the fixtures down. What's the next step? Yeah, we just finished up programming for it, and then we'll start running production on it. Well, it's talking about the programming. It's not something you just come over here and wham, bam, bam, they're up and welding, right? No. Programming takes quite a while. This particular part takes about a week, but once the program's set, then you got it. Then it's ready for a full run. You keep going. Yep. So I guess my next question to lead me in here, you got multiple fixtures here. So is each fixture doing a certain part of the welding and then it moves on to another section? Yeah. So this particular one will weld everything on the arm, top and bottom. Once that's complete, it moves on to this fixture, which welds the pivot bungs. And then it'll even move on to the driver's side over there, which repeats the same process. So are you guys doing two sets of left and rights with this one run? Yes. Awesome, and what, what, what's that take, I mean, as far as time from start to finish? Uh, for a full run of both arms, takes about 45 minutes. Okay, and then switch them out, put another set in there, and ready to go again. Yep. It's awesome, man. Well, thank you for your time. Yep. I'm learning more as we go along this line. All right. So we're at station one. Um, there's actually three more of these robotic welders down the line, but we're over here at station two where Chris is, and you know, it all starts right here. We got guys outside bending, notching, getting all the arms ready to go onto the fixtures. And well, here's Chris and he's over here. Over there, I think we were doing uh, the C10 arms and you're doing tri -fi arms? tri five upper control arms. Awesome, so you know, we do all of them, uppers, lowers, and across the board from the Ford and Chevy arms here. Um, man, where are we at? Are we ready to weld or what? Yeah, we're getting ready to weld. We're, uh, we got all the program all roughed out, so we're just going in and tuning the weld settings to get them to where we want to be to uphold that class performance parts standard. Awesome. So you're kind of set up just like Jared was over there. You got a couple arms on each one. Is this two sets? Yes, sir. So this is a left and right side. We do all three steps. So we got our first step here, which is doing our ball joint cup. Then here we do everything except for putting the barrels on the end of the arm. And then this is our final operation that gets us our barrels onto the arm. Man, can, we see, this, arm. can we see this machine go? Or yes, what? sir. All right. Does it go around like when you first put them in there and kind of tack each in, get everything secure, and then go back around? Yes. Okay. So it goes in, tacks the parts, so that way nothing can move as the rotator's moving all the fixtures around. There's a lot of weight moving sure. around when we're doing that. So one thing I'm noticing is why are we hitting on, off, on, off like that? So we're doing a process called stitch pulse, which it's supposed to give us an appearance almost like TIG welding. So it, it allows us to keep as much heat out of the part as possible so we don't get any warping. And it allows us to get a good penetrated weld that almost looks exactly like a stack of dimes TIG weld. Yeah, and as you can see, I mean, these arms, this is what he's talking about. This is on, off, on, off, on, off. 
and you know you get a little bit splatter but it is still mid welding at the end of the day but we all this stuff gets cleaned up sent out powder coated and at the end of the day man you're gonna get a quality arm for either your tri-fi your t10 or whatever arm you want to buy exactly awesome man all right, so once the arm's all welded up, it goes through quality control. Once it passes that, we send it out to powder coat. When it returns from powder coat, we assemble it here in-house, and here we have a completed arm. So when you're ready for your steering, brakes, or suspension for your hot rod, either visit classicperform.com or give them a call.